Cheers and welcome my friends, I'm Holotrak and this video is part of my EU4 Academy video tutorial series. EU4 is a grand strategy game developed by Paradox that allows you to play any nation on the globe between 1444 and 1821. It's a complex game with lots of different mechanics, so to make this series work it has to be as granular and as focused as possible, which means that aside from the video's topic, not every mechanic we touch on can be fully explained. If you come across a mechanic you don't understand, I recommend browsing the playlist which you find a link to in the video description and now let's get to it. This video will be about the elements of the main view of Europa Universalis 4. We'll talk about the upper left area of the screen, the upper right area of the screen and the lower right area of the screen. First important area of the upper left screen is the resource bar. This will allow you to see how your nation is doing with one quick glance. From left to right you see the amount of ducats that you have and if you mouse over it your monthly income. You see the amount of manpower that you have. This will allow you to recruit new armies or reinforce existing ones. The same is true for the sailors. This will allow you to build new ships or maintain existing navies. You have your national stability ranges from plus three to minus three. High values are good. Negative values spell trouble. You have your corruption zero is the best value that you can have can go up to 100 and will make life difficult for you prestige over here influences everything a little bit um, can range from plus 100 to minus 100 will decay naturally you have the legitimacy of your current ruling dynasty 100 is the best value that you can get ranges from 100 to zero and then you have your power projection over here higher values are better ranges from zero to 100 Right below the resource bar you find the monarch power points. So we currently have 42 administrative power, 42 diplomatic power and 98 military power. And you can see that we're gaining 7 military power, 3 diplo and 3 admin power per month. To the right of the resource bar you have the agents view. Agents are an abstraction of the civilian personnel of your country. From left to right you see merchants currently have zero available merchants, two of them are busy, we have no colonists yet, we have three out of three available diplomats that we could send out on missions and we have two available missionaries out of two total that we could use to convert provinces. Below the agents is the age indicator. We're currently in the age of discovery. If you own the mandate of heaven DLC you can actually click on this see what uh, your splendor count is currently, uh, what kind of objectives you would have to fulfill in this age. Uh, you can try to start a golden era, all that kind of good stuff, unlock various abilities. I'll go into this more in detail in a separate tutorial for now. You should just know that this is the age indicator and this will bring you to the other menu. Below the monarch powerpoint bar is the alerts area. You have various alerts here that try to direct your attention to various areas in your empire that um, need attention. The red ones require immediate attention. The green ones are sort of opportunities for you to take various actions. So for example, we could hire some advisors because we still have free slots. We could some build some buildings because we have free funds, all that kind of stuff. If you click on them, you will directly be brought to the menu where you can then take that action. For example, if I, I clicked on the build more, build more stuff and it brought me to the build menu, that is pretty neat. The red ones probably require immediate attention. We are reminded to set our rivals to gain more power projection which is pretty good. Um, if you don't want to see those, you can just right click on them and they go away. They will return whenever you reload into the game, but you can also permanently send them away, shift right click on them. Let's get rid of the rivals alert. So that one is gone. Um, you can reactivate those though. So fret not, go to the outliner over here, go to the options, outliner options and turn on disabled alerts over here by clicking on that one. I already have it on and then click on it and that specific alert will come back. So whenever you accidentally disabled one of these alerts, this is a way to bring them back. In the top left corner of the main view, you see the coat of arms of your country, in this case Castile's coat of arms. And if you click on it, you open the country view. Sometimes this is also called the shield menu. And this will allow you to take decisions on a global scale, um, ranging from uh, your court to your government to um, diplomacy with other countries, your economy, trade, technology, all this kind of good stuff. We'll talk about it in other tutorial videos in detail. For now, it's just important that you know how to access the country view and it, this is just done by clicking on the on the coat of arms. It is glowing red because we are one of the eight great powers of the world. 
and uh, which is a concept that is enabled if you own the rights of man dlc um, nothing else behind that speaking of the great powers if you own the rights of man dlc you will also have access to this button which will show you the great powers it also shows you what the great power status has as an effect currently it's definitely beneficial to be one of the greatest countries in the world other nations will look differently on you um, this will show you either where you are in the ranks the higher the better um, depends on your development and your current technology cost um, if you're not in the ranks then you will be shown down here with your development and your tech cost um, being great power has various benefits like certain diplomatic actions certain passives you'll be able to force other countries to break their alliances with other nations and uh, generally allow you to throw your own weight around the final element of the upper left area of the main view is the production interface or macro builder as it's also called and this is accessed by clicking on this button or pressing b and this will give you a really handy tool for doing things very very quickly that otherwise would take tons and tons of clicks um, so this will allow you for example to recruit troops just with one click like doing doing like this will build two additional regiments if you don't have the macro builder this would uh, require you to go into the province go into the recruit regiment thing and uh, then queue up the troops that you want to build in there so this will save you massive amounts of time uh, it has also the naval units you can go for building ships from here you can call things you can send missionaries out you can reduce or increase local autonomy change the culture you can sort these by cost for example or by by other things you can build buildings from here we are currently out of money so we can't build anything anymore because i recruit those units it doesn't really matter then you have development if you own the common sense dlc you have estates if you own the cossacks dlc and you have diplomacy if you own the um Mandate of Heaven DLC, and uh, then you have Exploit Development, if you have Cradle of Civilization, and if you own the Art of War, you will also be able to create templates in here, army templates that allow you to either build the same units out of regulars or mercenaries. So very, very useful tool, even if you don't own the DLCs, this is um, taking away a lot of the busy work from the player. The upper right corner of the main view contains the second most important tool for an EU4 player, which is the outliner. You can find it over here. If you click on it, it will bring up an information window that you can completely customize however you want it. Like if you don't want to see, for example, your navies, then click on this, turn it off, turn it on again. If you're not interested in seeing the human players, you can turn that off if you're never going to play multiplayer. Um, very very useful thing i've always turned the provinces off because it just clutters clutters the outliner then but this will basically not only give you an overview of what um, is happening in your empire we can see that we're currently building some ships we're recruiting some regiments we have free diplomats which we should probably send out on missions but it also allows you to jump really quick between uh between certain things so i can if i click on the armies it will jump to the respective army and select it if i click on the navy it'll jump there so lots and lots of useful things in the outliner the other elements are the speed dial up here um, which allows you to either go for a higher speed the more of these elements are filled the higher the speed um, yeah, we'll get to that in a second if you click on here the game will continue if you click on the date this will pause unpause this is the achievement view so if you're playing in iron man you will be able to see exactly what you need to fulfill to get a certain achievement if you're an achievement hunter and uh, this will give you a music player so you can either um, play the track pause the track skip to the next track or go for that for like the big music player i've turned the music off for these tutorials so it doesn't um play on in the background and my voice is more easily discernible but uh yeah very very nice way of actually playing some of the awesome music that eu4 has and the final element of the upper right screen is the show timeline uh to show that off i've jumped into my let's play series save game with the netherlands because i couldn't really do that with castile because we haven't really played anything in that game so if you go on show timeline this will allow you to basically replay uh, the history of your country and you can see that uh, the world is changing over here we started out as holland and then we see sort of holland take over this area we see other nations taking over things this is actually pretty cool once you're through with your game you can see how you painted the map we can see that holland is getting bigger and bigger eating its neighbors and uh, 
then sort of actually spreading into the new world. We can see New Holland over here. So that's actually a really fun feature and it's easy to overlook because it's behind this inconspicuous little um, timeline thing. And if you click on it again, uh, it's it's gone again. Uh, you can do that in various speeds. So really, really nifty little feature. On the lower right corner of the screen, you have the message window, which will send you uh, messages about countries that you're interested in. They will just appear one after the other. For example, we get a message that the papal state entered into a military alliance with Aragon. I've set this to best guess, um, just so that the game basically intuits what kind of countries I'm interested in, but you can change that however you want. You can, for example, go for Europe and then get messages about everyone in Europe um, saying that this is something that is interesting. It's probably going to fill pretty fast, so best guess is probably the, the best thing to do here. Um, but there are other options like enemies, neighbors, just see what you are interested in. Below the message window in the lower right corner, of the main view, you have the map modes, uh, mini map and the map modes. And I'm not going to go through all of these, but uh, you should know that this is a pretty important area of the game and allows you to see lots of information with just one quick glance. Uh, the normal view of EU4 where most people play most of the time is a political view, which just colors all provinces of one country in the same color. So for example, France has this bluish color, one big blue blob and uh, you can easily see all the French provinces, um, which is why this mode is so clearly readable. But you also have the terrain map mode, you have the trade map mode where you can see the flow of trade from one trade node into the other. And this also shows you centers of trade and estuaries, which are provinces that you might want to conquer if you want to control a certain trade node, all that kind of good stuff. You have a diplomatic map mode that, for example, if you click on Aragon, it shows us that Aragon is allied with Austria, shows us its junior partner. Very useful if you just want to have a quick look. Um, you have religious map view. Um, there are tons and tons of different map modes. I encourage you to look through these. I will make a separate tutorial video just to talking about these map modes and what you can use them for. Um, pretty important part of the game. And uh, these 10 things, you can actually configure however you want them. So let's f say, for example, I don't play in the HRE. Maybe I'm playing in Asia or something, so I don't really need the Imperial map mode. So then I can just right click on it and add another map mode. Maybe it's important for me to see cultures in the various provinces. So I have changed that and now it shows me the culture. So if I want to get rid of that one again, I just go in here and kick the culture map mode and uh, then this will be back to Imperial. So very important, very important thing. Here are all the map modes that you have available. So I just encourage you to um, go through these, have a look at how things work and uh, what kind of information you can glance from it. Below the minimap, we have five different buttons which allow us to steer to various areas of the game. This will give us the main menu. The important thing about the main menu is actually that you have message settings in here. I will make a whole video talking about this, but this basically allows you to tailor all the messages that you get from the game specifically to how you want it. So for example, you can tell the game to pause every time another ma nation makes peace with, let's say, your rival. Um, so the game will display a pop-up and uh, pause the game and you will have all the time in the world to take in that uh, that information. So this is this is a good thing to spend some time in. You will probably learn how to set this up so that it specifically fits your tastes and your preferences. And the good thing is you only have to do that like once. The game will keep that for all the games that you play. So it's definitely worth it to customize your message settings for yourself. Other than that, they're pretty uh, standard settings in here, save game, all that kind of stuff. You don't really need a tutorial for that kind of thing. Then we have the ledger down here. The ledger is a very nice and interesting tool. Um, tons of statistics in here. You can see who makes the most money, which is currently England with 26.80 ducats per month. They're getting a ton of trade income. So that's like your statistic almanac. And it's a very important thing, especially for planning wars, all that kind of stuff. You can see who has the biggest army in the world currently. It's the Ottomans with 33,000 troops. They could build up to 37,000. Shows you what factors into this. Very, very important tool. I'll make a whole video about this and how to use it for various things. Just know that the ledger is down behind this button. Then you have the history. The game does keep a chronicle of your of your 
nation and its exploits. And you can see, for example, that we lost the crusade for Granada. It says the unsuccessful crusade for Granada lasted for four years. In the reign of Juan, we moved our capital to Toledo. So that is basically what happened before we even started playing. But it's pretty cool. And uh, whenever you want to see that, you can actually pop in there. Then there are some triggered modifiers, which is stuff that happens if you fulfill certain conditions in the game. For example, if you occupy Rome um, and you're not Italy, then you will lose diplomatic reputation. So other other nations will find you kind of odd. Why are you occupying Rome? It should actually belong to the Pope and you will suffer some negative consequences. And this is basically there to either plan for a certain modifier or if, if you want to get one or trying to avoid someone, uh, some of these modifiers like uh, better not occupy Rome if you're not Italy. And then you have the find window over here, which allows you, for example, if you wanted to go to Paris, this will allow allows me to type in Paris, click on it, and it will even highlight the province that I was looking for. So if you ever have a message, such and such province is doing such and such, or it also works for countries. So if I go for France, um, I can click on this and it shows me the country, shows me the capital, all that kind of good stuff. So you are never lost in EU4. To the left of these five buttons, you also have the log, which you can expand by clicking on the button. And this will show any event that happens in the game. It will be continued whenever there's an event. It will be shown in the log uh, as time continues. You can see that down here. And whenever you miss something, you can just open the log. And for example, read the conditions of a peace treaty that you, that you missed as a message. You can customize that by, for example, turning off messages from interesting countries, turning off messages from other countries. So you only see the messages that, for example, concern your country. Very useful tool. And finally, left from the log button, you have the papacy window, which is open to us because we are Catholics. This shows us who is currently controlling the Holy See. It's the papal state themselves. You can see who has how many active cardinals. So uh, France is the only one who has two active cardinals. The others all have one. And uh, it allows you to go for certain papal actions depending on the papal influence that you have. I'm going to go over this in uh, more detail in a separate tutorial video. But this is just how that how that looks and how you access the Holy See. And then left of that is the Holy Roman Empire, where you can have a look at who's the emperor, who are the electors, how many imperial reforms have been passed, who's actually a member of the empire. It will show all the princes. It will show who the electors are voting for. I'm going to do a separate video for that one as well. Just know that... Uh, this is the button that allows you to see the Holy Roman Empire and its internal politics. This brings us to the end of our overview of the main interface, main view of EU4. It is a lot to take in. Don't be distraught. We'll get through this bit by bit. And at some point you will be using all these interface things like someone playing a piano. It's going to be all instruments at the tip of your fingers. EU4 has become a lot better in comparison to EU3 in the way that it presents its information. And if you're in doubt, you can always use the mouse cursor to just hover over certain things and you will have like a context tooltip. So for example, if I hover over the treasury, it'll show me um, additional information. And that is true of almost any element in EU4, which actually makes the game fairly self-explaining. And uh, whenever you're in doubt, just hover. Hover with the hover with the mouse button over over things, and there will be explanations and additional information popping up. Thanks for watching this part of the EU4 Academy. The Academy is an in-depth video tutorial series aimed at helping more people enjoy one of the best grand strategy games out there. If you found it helpful, then please consider leaving a like so that I can show up in search results and help even more people. If you want to learn more about EU4, then check the playlist. The link is in the description or have a look at my Let's Play content. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Cheers.